Welcome to another test from the Practice Test Geeks. In this video, we are going to test verbal diagnostic test. Write your answers aside and check them with their explanations at the link provided in the video description. Enjoy your test and good luck! Question 1. In interviews, despots are often surprisingly blank. This helps to explain how seemingly awful people are able to command so many followers. A. Malign. B. Indignant. C. Forgiving. D. Personable. E. Munificent. Question 2. The thriving health food company sells blank. Meat products so meat like that vegetarians sometimes call the phone number on the box to make sure that the product is really animal free. A. Mendacious. B. Nugatory. C. Airzots. D. Mimetic. E. Clandestine. Question 3. The successful tech company faces an ironic problem in the fall quarter. People are so excited about the next blank of its product, which will be released over the holidays, that they refuse to purchase the blank version. Bank 1. A. Ingenuity. B. Implication. C. Iteration. Blank 2. A. Obsolete. B. Current. C. Practical. Question 4. Newborn babies are perfectly blank, as yet unable to be concerned for others, or even to understand a difference between themselves and the world around them. As young children mature, they make the blank. Discovery that other people exist and have their own needs and desires. In other words, that the entire world is not about them. Blank 1. A. Solipsistic. B. Sophomoric. C. Quixotic. Blank 2. A. Arresting. B. Selfish. C. Undo. Question 5. Historically, arguments against women's suffrage blank. From the claim that women would cancel out their husband's votes to the charge that women would merely blank their husband's preferences, thus making their votes redundant. Such arguments, while once convincing, today seem blank. Indeed. Blank 1. A. Ran the gauntlet. B. Ran the gamut. C. Held the line. Blank 2. A. Override. B. Ape. C. Disclaim. Blank 3. A. Ponderous. B. Shabby. C. Cogent. Question 6. His theory purported that proper enjoyment of art was a matter of pure aesthetics. It is surely, he says, a baser pleasure being enjoyed by the untrained blank, the museum tourist with blank, sensibilities. And even the art theorists and art historians who simply appreciate cultural reference or narratives in art, a predilection he thinks leads to blank, view of any art that includes such elements. Blank 1. A. Cabal. B. Literati. C. Hoi polloi. Blank 2. A. Incendiary. B. Parochial. C. Dulcet. Blank 3. A. A facile. B. An urbane. C. A painstaking. Question 7 is based on the following reading passage. During an economic depression, it is common for food prices to increase even as incomes decrease. Surprisingly, 
however, researchers determined that during a depression, for every 5% increase in the cost of bread, the lowest socioeconomic class actually increases the amount of bread purchased per capita by 3%. Which of the following hypotheses best accounts for the researchers' findings? A. Not all food costs increase during a depression, some food items actually become less expensive. B. Because bread consumption does not increase by the same percentage as the cost does, people are likely consuming more of other food items to compensate. C. When incomes decrease, people are typically forced to spend a larger proportion of their income on basic needs, such as food and housing. D. People who suddenly cannot afford more expensive foods, such as meat, must compensate by consuming more inexpensive foods, such as grains. E. During a depression, people in the lowest socioeconomic class will continue to spend the same amount of money on food as they did before the depression began. Question 8. Bedbug infestations have been a problem in major cities for years. The pesticide DDT has been found to be useful in killing bedbugs. However, DDT was banned in the United States and has been replaced by weaker pesticides. Thus, there is no effective means for eradicating bedbugs in the United States. Which of the following, if true, most weakens the conclusion? A. Bedbugs resemble other small insects in their appearance and behavior. B. Bedbugs have largely been eradicated in other parts of the world. C. Some treatments that do not include DDT have proven effective against bedbugs in other parts of the world. D. Bedbugs are resistant to the types of pesticides used to treat cockroach and ant infestations. E. The number of bedbug infestations has risen significantly in the 21st century. Questions 9 to 12 are based on the following reading passage. Dan Flavin's The Alternate Diagonals of March 2, 1964 to Don Judd, an 8-foot-long diagonal beam of light set at a 45-degree angle, is a colorful sculpture of light that is visually arresting, even from across the room. As one approaches the work, it is difficult not to become almost blinded by the intensity of the light and the vivacity of the colors. Though it may strike one as garish on first glance, a more lengthy perusal reveals a delicate interplay between the red and yellow beams, giving the work a visual richness. Alternate Diagonals was made by Flavin in response to one of his own previous works, The Diagonal of May 25, 1963 to Constantine Brancusi. His first piece composed solely of light, The Diagonal of May 25, 1963, was also an eight-foot-long fluorescent light sculpture though Flavin never liked to call them sculptures. He referred to them as situations hung at a 45-degree angle, and also included a yellow fluorescent light tube. Alternate diagonal seems almost more of an evolution of the former work than a response to it, but regardless of the exact nature of the intended interplay between the two, it is important to frame alternate diagonals as a companion work. Alternate diagonals is a kind of ready-made, entirely made of fluorescent lights that anyone could find in any hardware store and construct as Flavin has. This is precisely what is so intriguing about the work. It toys with the boundaries of what we can define as a ready-made in contemporary art and, perhaps, within the field of art production itself. It forces a spectrum to be employed instead of a black and white categorization of the ready-made. A spectrum stretching between the pure ready-made any work that essentially could be transferred straight from anyone's garage to a gallery, such as Duchamp's bottle rack, all the way to a contemporary two-dimensional work where the artist's canvas and paints were purchased from an art supply store in an infinitely more manipulated but still semi-ready-made fashion. Flavin's piece, it seems, is situated somewhere in the center of such a spectrum, and raises the question of where the ready ends and the made begins. Question 9. The main point of the passage is to a. Assert the superiority of ready-made art. B. Decry the broadening of the definition of art. C. Discuss a work in context and its effect on the discipline. D. Explain the relationship between two works of art. E. Praise an artist and his creations. Question 10. According to the passage, both diagonal works could best be described as A. Using red and yellow light. B. Initially striking the viewer as garish. C. Toying with boundaries of art. 
D. Running through the plane at a particular slope. E. Identical in concept. Question 11. The author's tone could best be described as A. Admiring and supportive. B. Enthusiastic and fawning. C. Respectful and distant. D. Obligatory and unenthused. E. Redite and objective. Question 12. The passage implies which of the following? A. Conventional two-dimensional work is a thing of the past. B. Flavin is one of the most important artists of his time. C. Bottle rack has very little artistic manipulation. D. Flavin disliked the word sculpture because of the Renaissance association. E. The best artwork is in the center of the artistic spectrum of art production. For questions 13 to 16, select the two answer choices that, when used to complete the sentence, fit the meaning of the sentence as a whole and produce completed sentences that are alike in meaning. Question 13. Many young employees actively seek out mentors, but when managers attempt to mentor young employees who have not sought out mentoring, the help often comes across as presumptuous and, blank. A. Baneful. B. Noxious. C. Patronizing D. Amenable. E. Pragmatic. F. Condescending. Question 14. In previous decades, it was simply assumed that fathers of young children would work full time and at the same intensity as they did before becoming parents, but today, increasing numbers of men, wanting to further their careers but also wanting to spend time with their children, are more blank, about this arrangement. A. Stolid. B. Ambiguous. C. Whimsical. D. Ambivalent. E. Equivocal. F. Officious. Question 15. The slipstream is a partial vacuum, created in the wake of a moving vehicle that allows for drafting, whereby, a race car can blank, another by taking advantage of reduced wind resistance. A. Supersede. B. Assume. C. Overtake. D. Champion. E. Collide. F. Outstrip. Question 16. While the celebration of the artist's work was European, nothing but plaudits and tributes. Many of those in the art world feel that an acknowledgement of the artists, blank, would help to humanize the artist and make the art more accessible. A. Faculties. B. Poultices. C. Foibles. D. Mores. E. Aptitudes. F. Peccadillos. Questions 17 and 18 are based on the following reading passage. In keeping with the notable incorporation of operatic elements into the rock music lexicon, the genre in the 1970s experienced a significant shift in emphasis away from recording and toward music performance itself. Several factors affected this change. First, the extended length and the moralizing subject matter of songs of the era rendered them less appropriate for radio play and more suitable for public presentation. Additionally, the advent of the concept album, in which multiple tracks revolved around a single unifying narrative or theme, furnished a basis upon which similarly calibrated performances could be enacted. Finally, as PA system technology improved, it became possible to hold concerts with 100,000 people or more, which encouraged artists to craft concerts that diverged from the merely musical toward the experiential. 
bands began conceiving of their performances as shows, more akin to musical theater guided by plot and setting than to the traditional concert guided by the omnipresent setlist. Instead of simply playing one song after another, therefore, bands developed full performance medleys revolving around specific motifs, and punctuated by bombastic light shows, costume changes, and other massive stunts. For example, the popular British band Pink Floyd famously built a barrier in the middle of stage during one performance then had it dramatically knocked down mid-show as a promotion for their new album The Wall. Question 17. The passage cites all of the following as reasons for the inclusion of operatic elements into the rock music genre in the 1970s except a. Changes in concert equipment changed the way shows could be delivered. b. Pink Floyd's dramatic staging served to promote an influential album. c. Shifts in the content of the music contributed to the songs having a more storytelling quality. d. One medium through which rock songs had typically been delivered to the public became less conducive to the genre. e. Artists altered their performances to reflect changes in the modern concert ambience. Question 18. In the context of the passage, the word affected, line 3, most nearly means a. Influenced b. Moved forward c. Transformed d. Determined e. Brought about Questions 19 and 20 are based on the following reading passage. In 1977, the Community Reinvestment Act was passed for the purpose of reducing discriminatory credit practices, in low-income neighborhoods. The act required federal financing supervisory agencies, to use their authority to encourage lending institutions to meet the credit needs, of all borrowers in their communities. The CRA had little impact until 1993, when the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, initiated legal proceedings against lenders who declined too many applications from minority borrowers. Some argue that, while providing equal access to credit is an important aim, pressure on lenders from HUD led to practices that later caused those same lenders to be assailed as predatory. In Housing Boom and Bust, economist Thomas Sowell wrote that the CRA, far from being as benign as it appeared, was based on a flawed assumption that government officials were qualified to tell banks how to lend the money entrusted to them by depositors and investors. Consider each of the answer choices separately and indicate all that apply. Question 19. It can be inferred from the passage that a. The CRA was perceived by some as seemingly innocuous. b. HUD had the ability to affect banking practices. c. Thomas Sowell has asserted that prerequisites exist for the act of directing banks' lending activities. Consider each of the answer choices separately, and indicate all that apply. Question 20. Which of the following can be inferred about discriminatory credit practices? A. They are more common in middle-income neighborhoods than in high-income neighborhoods. B. Legislators who voted for the CR did so because they were opposed to such practices. C. Critics allege that attempts to combat such practices can have unintended consequences. 